truly understand what it's all about. I pray for each and every one that's here. God, they didn't, they're not here by accident. God, they're here by a divine appointment from you. You knew they'd be in this place. You knew what it is they needed to hear. And I pray, dear God, through your spirit and your word, that God, they hear it and they respond to your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a seat. Again, welcome everyone. You're a pretty good looking crowd. All right. <laughs> I don't know how you all found a place to park out there, but uh, that's a good thing, all right? There's a lyric, a line in that song, I love, and it's, His word my hope secures. His word my hope secures. I hope you know that your entire hope and future is dependent upon the security of His word, but it's something you can secure your hope in, Right? The whole world secures hope in something. You as a believer secure your hope in His Word. We're going to be talking a lot about that as we get into this today. I read a verse earlier. I'm going to read it again. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to get right into it. We don't want that candy and the eggs to melt too much out there in the sun. Which it is Michigan, so you know, it might be snowing before we get there. First Peter chapter one, verse three through five, the Bible says this. Listen real close to these verses. This is going to set up today. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we've been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great expectation. We have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. I want to talk to you this Easter morning about great expectations. You ever build something in your mind up so much, you know, that um, when you see it or experience, it just doesn't live up to the hype, even if it's your own hype, you know? My, my family always get on me. I'm kind of a promoter, so everything, you know, I just promote everything, you know? I can't wait to see that movie. That trailer looks so good. And then there's a term literally called trailer trash when it's talking about a movie because that trailer, nothing's even in the movie, you know, and there's just a big letdown, right? I can't wait to eat at whatever that place is, and you get there, and the portions are really tiny. <laughs> the price is really large. And it just wasn't as good as you built up in your mind. I can't wait to grow up. <laughs> Said by anyone not grown up. <laughs> when you get to the point where you wish you could go back, then you're grown up. All right. Can't wait for Friday or the weekend because I'm going to get all this stuff done. We're going to go do all this. You guys don't do none of it. None of it. Oh, the things I'll get done. I can't wait to get a job. Only to think I can't wait to retire. Only to think I better get a part-time job just to kill some time. <laughs> I can't wait to own my own place. <laughs> well, good luck with the payment and the upkeep and the maintenance <laughs> and the mowing and the raking and all that comes with you owning your own place, right? I can't wait to make my own money and then let the government take it. <laughs> I can't wait to get that raise because then the government just takes more. <laughs> Listen, let's face it, let's just be honest. Life on this earth is just not worth the hype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not as great as people want you to believe it is. Imagine, however, experiencing something 
that is beyond what you can even imagine or think of. Let me read you, show you a verse up here, 1 Corinthians 2 9. Because again, imagine something you never even thought possible. Imagine something you can't even imagine. The Bible says this that's what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love it. So you can imagine all you want, and you still can't come up with what God has prepared for you and I as a believer. You can try to think of it, but you won't be able to think of it. You don't even know what to think. Scripture gives us some stuff, but it doesn't give you everything, and he's telling you, your mind, it's you're, you're not even on the level of what's waiting for you. You just don't even know it. Listen, we may not be able to imagine it all. However, we should believe and live with great expectation. Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dead. Jesus Christ died, but then took back his life. Nobody's done that, people. Nobody's ever done that. He wasn't sleeping. It's not a myth or a legend. He was dead. No breath in him. The way, the truth, and the life died, but then he took back his life that Easter morning. And there is incredible great expectation for anyone that chooses to believe as a result of that. Jesus crucified on the cross. He gave his life for ours. He became the sacrifice for our sins. He died. He was buried. <laughs> Three days later, no longer buried, no longer dead. Matthew chapter 28. Let's read the verses of what happened that Easter morning, beginning in verse 1, Matthew 28. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. I love that that he sat on it. <laughs> it's just so cool. It's like, okay, people, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> Let the tours begin, right? You know? His face shone like lightning. His clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. Listen, the women, they made their way to that tomb that morning, and they there wasn't there weren't a lot of great expectations. Okay? They actually about to, they had a conversation back and forth. Their biggest thing was. How are we going to roll the stone away from the tomb? We got lady arms. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I don't mean that bad. That's what they're talking about. They're, they're going there with spices to anoint a dead body. I'm telling you, the expectations that Sunday morning were really bleak. Jesus was dead. No one, not the women, not the disciples. None of that had any great expectations. As a matter of fact, their expectations were over. To them, all hope was lost. Jesus was dead. They had no other expectation otherwise. They were going to that tomb that morning to see a dead body, to mourn a dead body, to mourn, to grieve, to anoint a dead body. Listen, that doesn't sound like a great expectation, does it? Does that sound like a way you want to start your day? No. Again, the Gospel of Mark tells us their greatest concern was who's going to roll away the stone, that stone. They didn't have any expectation that they could even get to Jesus' body. They went to that tomb that morning. No expectations, only grief. Grief to mourn death. They thought death had cut all their hope short robbed them of any promise of hope they might have. They get to the tomb, stone rolled away, angels setting on it. 
I promise you, they weren't expecting that. And then there, again, verse 5, Matthew 25, the angel said, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead just as he said what happened. Come see where his body was lying. And that rolled away stone, empty tomb, comes with incredible great expectation for you and I. Jesus raised from the dead, and he's promised you and I, and anyone who believes that you too will experience a resurrection to life everlasting. Well, before I go any further, I just want to share something personal, and this is not an emotional thing. It's not an emotional plea for a message or anything, but those of you that were here Friday, uh, I told you my mother passed away Friday. So this week, my family, we're going to travel to Missouri, and there'll be a funeral. And, and listen, nobody wants to go to a funeral, right? It's pretty cool. We've got a lot of family that's going to be gathered together. It'll be an awesome thing. My mother was a believer, so it's a joyous celebration. But I want you to understand that what I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm telling you from a conviction of every ounce of who I am that I believe this. It's God's Word. It is in God's Word that my hope and anyone who believes, hope is secured. And there is reason why this all matters. It's not just something. It's important to understand. Anyone who believes, you will experience a resurrection to life everlasting just as Jesus took back his life. Jesus' death on the cross. Let me walk you through this real quick. Some of you, maybe you only come at Easter and you just hear that one message and that's great. Maybe you come Christmas and Easter. You get the birth and, and death and all that. But listen, I want to explain to you what it's all about. Maybe you have no church background, or maybe you've got some mixed up background of theology. Let me just share with you what Scripture says so that you know if you believe you can have great expectation that Jesus intends for us to have. His death on the cross paid your sin debt. Your sin put Jesus on the cross. He never sinned. He was nailed to the cross. He suffered, bled, he died. And it should have been you that paid the debt of your own sin. But Jesus, on your behalf, stepped in and took your place. 2 Corinthians 5.21. I don't know if we'll have it up here, but the Bible says this. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. How are you made right with God through Christ? By faith. You place your faith and trust in Jesus, you receive his salvation, the forgiveness of your sins. Now that's an incredible expectation. Your sin is forgiven. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everyone in here is a sinner, except for me. <laughs> that's not what it says. I just have to, I gotta kind of liven you up, everybody. You're kind of, you know, you're smiling at me, but you're quiet, all right? Everyone's a sinner. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God has never sinned. He's perfect. All right? You and I are not. So we get that out of the way. There's no exemptions here. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, how are we made right, people? By what? One word. Faith. Let's say it again. How are we made right? All right, awesome. You guys are doing good. Is there any other way? No. All right, all right. We have peace with God. The verse says we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of what he's done for us, because you've placed your faith in him, you are forgiven of your sins. All right? And forgiveness of your sins is great. But if you still die being forgiven, well, that doesn't live up to the hype. Right? Well, I'm glad I'm forgiven, but now I just no longer exist. That's just it. I mean, let's be honest. If, if you were only to be forgiven but not promised anything after, you'd never be forgiven. I know you people. <laughs> Let's be honest. Live like there's no tomorrow if there's no tomorrow, right? 
That's what you'd be doing. But there is more great expectation than just forgiveness of your sins. Forgiveness of your sins took Jesus to the cross. But you understand his death, burial, resurrection, his resurrection did something else. It just builds on the expectations that you and I should live by. Let me read you some verses. We'll have them up here. Isaiah 26, 19. But those who die in the Lord will live. Their bodies will rise again. Those who sleep in the earth will rise up and sing for joy. For your life-giving light will fall like dew on your people in the place of the dead. Well, what else does the Bible say? Jesus said, John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Now listen, either he's a liar or he's not. And you know he's not. His word is true. Uh, let's just, I mean, you know, I know you, you hear that verse, you know it. You think you know it. You're going to die. But if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you will live again. John chapter 5, verse 24. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, because again, that's been forgiven, but they have already passed from death into life. And I assure you that the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. In verse 28, it says, Don't be surprised indeed, the time's coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son and they will rise again. <clears throat> Those who've done good will rise to experience eternal life. Those who've uh, continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. So listen, you're not only forgiven, but you're promised to resurrect just as Jesus did. I mean, talk about some incredible events of Easter weekend, death on the cross saves me from my sins if I put my faith and trust in him. His being buried, his resurrection, if I put my faith and trust in him, gives me life everlasting. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. We have a priceless inheritance. Priceless inheritance. Let's talk about that a second. What kind of value do you put on for forever? Man tries, he'll sell you life insurance. Right? Funny thing about life insurance, you the one who's taken out the life insurance on yourself, don't get to enjoy it. <laughs> you don't get to collect it, and it doesn't keep you alive. Sounds like some false advertising to me. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine the people that sit around and said, let's sell people something that they'll pay us for, that they don't get any benefit from. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Mankind will sell you a forever home. You'll be in this home for forever. No, you won't. <laughs> you all know you won't. And talk about a home that decays. My word. Yeah. Maintenance is crazy, people. Yeah. We live on a peninsula. We spend our whole life trying to fight water. <laughs> staying out of the house, right? <laughs> and wood and water don't like each other, right? Mm -hmm. You see a lot of rot and decay. Mankind will sell you a funeral for a price. Even let you make payments. Notice they don't let the deceased make the payments. You can pay in advance. <laughs> I mean, you really think it through, right? You can prepay, but again, you don't get to enjoy it. Right? Listen, how valuable, if you just if you were to put a price on it, how valuable is a priceless inheritance? It's kind of in the, the wording, isn't it? It kind of, it's its own definition. It's priceless. There is no price. Well, there is. 
John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. People, that's actually a verse. I don't know if you've ever thought it through. That verse, it's a, what we call a red letter verse. So you use the, uh, that have your Bible, you know, the red letters. It's not the red letters are more important, but those are specifically words that are attributed to, to Jesus speaking. So Jesus is saying those words. So just think about it. What he's, he's basically saying is, my father loved the world so much that he gave me his only son. Whoever believes in me should not perish but have everlasting life. It cost Jesus everything. But that cost of him of everything gives you a priceless inheritance. That first Peter 1 Peter 1.4, an inheritance that's kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Kept in heaven for you, beyond the reach of change and decay. Listen, a grave may mark where your body rests, your bones, your flesh, and earn your ashes, or maybe, maybe you may go unmarked in this lifetime. But believer, you're promised an everlasting life, a priceless inheritance that comes truly with what is your forever home. Jesus said this words, John chapter 14, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and notice that if I go does not mean if he went, like he's making a decision, well, if I go, no, he went, the if is whether or not you're one of his. It's placing your faith and trust in him. You're the if factor, not him. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So just think about these verses here. Jesus, for those of you that have put your faith and trust in him, have promised that there is room in heaven for you. I've got room, he's saying. It's an invitation. I've got room. I want you here. I have prepared a place for you. How'd you like that? Jesus Christ is actually preparing your forever home right now, getting it ready for what he has already said you can't even imagine. You guys like to travel and go to those hotels? I love to travel. I really, actually, my wife, we both like to travel. What I like is the fact my wife likes a really firm mattress. That's all fine. But what I like is when you get to that hotel, I like all those pillows. I just as soft as soft can be. I would, sounds bad, I always want to steal their pillows. <laughs> I do. You can't replicate, I don't know, you can't buy it. I don't know where they get it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, she's back there. I know. And I always feel bad about having that thought, but it crosses my mind. <laughs> just tell me how much it is. <laughs> Those fancy hotels, you get a little mint on your pillow. It's all tucked in so nice, except on the end. What is up with the end sheet, people? It's like, it just gets ripped out immediately. Be got to breathe. Where I'm going with this, I'm just talking about a place being prepared for you, right? You're getting it all set up for your arrival. It's all, what I always love is when you book the hotel, you, you book the hotel, but then there's that moment you open the door and you're just like, or you're like, eh. <laughs> you booked it. <laughs> I'm cheap. There's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of times driving late at night. We'll probably experience it on this trip we're about to have. But, you know, about midnight, we'll pull over and. I'll say, what do you think about this place? My wife will just look at me like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> He's preparing a place for you, a place you can't even imagine. It's going to be so great. I mean, we know the roads will be paved with gold. We know it, it, there's no death. There's no any of that. I mean, that's all awesome and great. But 
He's told you some things, but he's not told you everything. You and I can't even handle how great it's going to be. That's, I know it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like a bunch of hype. You and me, we've been let down in our life so many times for something being oversold. This is no oversell, upsell, or nothing. He tells us, I'm coming for you. Those verses, he tells us, I'm coming for you. My mother didn't die Friday morning. Jesus came for her. For any that's a believer, God knows when you're going to take your last breath. He knows from the foundation before the world began. And for those that are his, he comes for you. Each and every one of you. All you have to do is believe. It seems like such a small thing. And then, if that's not enough, you will be with him for forever. You will be with him for forever. My greatest expectation this Easter morning is that because I place my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, my sins are forgiven, but it doesn't stop there. My great expectation this Easter morning is that when I die, I will also resurrect. And I will be in his presence. I will be in that place that he's prepared for me. And I will be there forever with him. My body will resurrect one day after I die, just as Jesus did. Listen, my spirit, your spirit, for anyone that believes, that's his. You put your faith and trust in him. The Bible's very clear, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. The thief on the cross, right? One of them said, if you're the Messiah, come down, save yourself, save us too. And the other thief, I'm paraphrasing, are you kidding? We deserve to die. This man's done nothing. He's innocent. And he looks at him and says, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I want you to think about that, people. That man, whatever age, had lived his whole life not for God. But in the last final moments, he surrenders himself, puts his faith and trust in Jesus. You may sit here and say, think, there's no hope for me. Listen, you still have breath. You're still here. As long as you have breath, there's hope for you. The only thing that's stopping you from having hope is you. My great expectation this Easter morning, Jesus has prepared a place for me. He's waiting for me to come home my forever home, and my great expectation is that I will be in his presence for forever. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 says this, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, uh, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Praise God. Listen, you may think, I don't know what the use is in believing because my whole life has just been a dumpster fire. <laughs> this whole thing about being a believer, I don't know. I mean, I believe, but I'm not sure it's worth it. You realize you can go through this whole life thinking that way, but it's all going to change the day you die. If you've got your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you go from this life of just trials and, and misery and the stuff not living up to the hype to, oh my word, 
I understand what salvation is now. I understand what redeemed is. I understand what resurrection is. I understand what it's all been about. These 70, 80, whatever years it was, was nothing for forever. <laughs> Listen, as a believer, you ought to expect very little in this world. It would help you if you would expect nothing of the world. That's a lot of problem for a lot of people. They expect the world to be their savior. That's never going to happen, people. It's never happened in all time, and it's never going to happen. This world does not get better, people. It's spelled out in the whole study of Revelation. It does not get better. It only gets worse. But for the believer, everything was changed when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, and three days later resurrected. Listen, you should live in great expectation based on what Christ has done for you. What he has prepared and planned for you. You should live in great expectation because Jesus Christ lives. And you should live in great expectation because you believe. Listen, I want to just ask you, we're gonna we're gonna close. I'll have whoever's coming up, music, let them come up. Listen, what expectations are you living with? I just want you to kind of think about that for a moment, all right? What expectations are you living with? Listen, maybe you're not happy with how things have been going for you. You know, it's understandable. Without Christ, it's not going to go well. Even with Christ, it's not going to be a cakewalk. But your hope is secured by his work. Your hope is secured by his death on the cross. Your hope is secured by his resurrection. He did what no one else has done, took back his life, and he did what no one else will do for you, can do for you, because no one has loved you the way Jesus Christ has loved you. He didn't have to die. He chose. He didn't have to resurrect. He chose. He didn't resurrect for himself, people. Jesus, got, I, you understand, he has nothing to prove. He's God. <laughs> it was all about you. Every bit of it. His birth, his death, his resurrection was all for you. He wants you to understand because of this, because I love you, you can live with great expectation of what's to come. And it seems like a small thing to say, all I'm asking is that you believe in me. I'm just asking that you believe. And if you believe, you get it all. Far more than you could ever even imagine. Do you have a priceless inheritance waiting for you. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. <laughs> this Easter morning, you came in with some kind of expectation. I want you to be able to leave here with the greatest of all expectations that you couldn't have even thought about when you walked in that room. Listen, if you're here, and you've never put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you don't even know what that means. The Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And again, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're here, you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, I want you to pray with me right now, right where you're at. You're not going to be embarrassed in any way, I promise you. We don't do that here. I can't save you people. No one can save you. 
No priest, no rabbi, no bishop, no pastor, no preacher, nobody can save you. This is something between you and God. God died for you. He resurrected for you. He wants you to believe. Simply pray this prayer. And there's no magic words here. It's just saying, God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you came. I believe you died. I believe. I accept that you resurrected. I may not understand it all, but God, I'm trusting in it. I ask you to save me. If you're here, no one looking around, if you prayed that prayer, you genuinely meant that, just slip your hand up. I just want to pray for you. Just slip your hand up real quick, just so I can see. I see that hand. I see that hand. That hand. That hand. Anyone else? Great expectations, people. Praying that prayer, that coming from your heart, that is, listen, now the price of inheritance is yours. You've placed your faith and trust in Jesus. Those of you that have already done this before in your life, and you can remember that, again, you have a priceless inheritance waiting for you. Fathers, we come before you, God, I pray that, God, you continue to speak to our hearts, that, God, today isn't just about family coming together and Easter eggs and a meal. God, it's about what your son, Jesus Christ, did. He took back his life. And because of that, each and every one of us that places our faith and trust in you is guaranteed by your word that secures a resurrection, life forever in heaven, in a place you've prepared for us beyond what we can imagine, beyond our expectations. God, I pray, don't let us forget it. God, let us live with that passion burning inside us to someday understand when salvation is revealed all that you have done for us. God, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, just a couple of announcements before we get to the eggs. Again, so glad you're here. Um,